Since he was a teenager, Israeli-American Natan Levy has trained to fight, first in Kung Fu, then Karate. Now he's a rising star in the UFC, and his most important fight yet might still await him in his home country of Israel. I sat down with Natan to get his thoughts on the emerging conflict. Natan, thank you for coming on the show. Thank you very much for having me. So, Natan, you are in Israel right now. You were not all that far from the Hamas attack when it first started, and you've been there for the last week or more. Uh, what are you seeing on the ground? Uh, over here, you know, I'm lucky enough to be uh, far enough, which is about 20 miles away from the where the real atrocities happened. Um, where I'm staying, it's sirens, uh, rockets, uh, the usual Israeli stuff. Uh, but what happened uh, pretty close to here was uh, was pretty scary. It's amazing for you to say, uh, you know, luckily I'm far away, uh, relatively far away from where all the atrocities happened. You know, I'm 20 miles out. It just drives home for people how small this country really is. Yeah, it's tiny. I live in Vegas and it's the same thing. 20 miles can be a, a ride to the gym. And out here, it's the difference between life and death. So... People, uh, I know friends of mine who live in Israel are being called up uh, for military service, especially as the war expands. You know, now it's expanded from southern Lebanon. Israel struck the Syrian airport. I mean, this who knows? You, this war could expand to Iran. How much of the population is being called up for military service? So we have uh, 3,000, 300,000 military reserve that's been uh, called up. And it actually got to... Uh, 120% uh, who came in. So more people than got called showed up for the reserve. People who did not get called showed up to defend their country because they really understand right now this is our, uh, you know, a new era independence war. If we don't win this one big time, uh, there will be no Israel. What are, what are you predicting? I mean, in terms of the next week, two weeks, month? How long are people in Israel expecting this war to go on? Ultimately, what is the objective going to be? Do you think the objective is going to be just obliterate Hamas? Is the objective going to be obliterate Gaza? Is the objective going to be regime change in Iran? I mean, what are, what are people talking about? You know, I can't, I can't tell you what the military strategy is, but I can tell you the people's sentiment. For us, we want a total destruction of Hamas. Um, you know, we won't stop. We don't want to stop this war until we have at least uh, anybody that's held captive and still alive. We want them back. You know, I see people tweeting about the escalation. There is no de-escalation. The gloves are off. Uh, do you want us to send them a gift card as well? There is going to be no de-escalation. You killed, confirmed, 1,300 uh, people, injured 3,000 people, uh, kidnapped more than 200 people. There is no de-escalation. We're going to obliterate Hamas and, and see from there. Of course, it's all coming from Iran. They're the enemies of the modern world, of Israel and of the U.S. And, uh, you know, any free nation in, in the, on the planet, they want us gone. They want us dead. Uh, they want something completely different in the world. And they're not scared of saying it. You know, people are walking around it, walking around it. They're not scared of saying it, and we shouldn't be scared to defend our country and to defend our values, our modern values, uh, you know, of freedom. It's basic and human rights. What about Hezbollah? So, you know, obviously the attack from the south comes from uh, Hamas, but Hezbollah then starts attacking from the north. Uh, will, will the war expand to obliterate Hezbollah as well, or is it really just focused on Hamas? Look, what happened with Hamas uh, for years, again, because Israel is a modern country, we don't want a war. We don't want people to die. So Hamas would launch rockets. We would fire back. We would defend ourselves. Of course, the world and everybody on Twitter would criticize Israel. And from there, you know, not because of that, but just because Israel wants to preserve life, the moment they would offer a truce, we would say, yeah, sure, truce. If you guys don't want to kill us, then we don't want to kill you. It's pretty simple. But what happened is the whole time, every time they ask for truce, they rearm themselves. They train themselves. They've been training for this attack for two years while we were letting them, you know, live peacefully. And so Hezbollah now 
I don't want us to do the same mistake. The, right now they're throwing rockets at us, but it's like they're throwing little rocks. And if we don't uh, attack, if we don't do anything, they're going to go to bigger stones and uh, until they find a way to kill us. So I don't want us to do the same mistake we did with Hamas by saying, oh, it's not big rockets. They're just, it's a cry for help. They're like a, a kid that's throwing a tantrum, right? But uh, actually, if you show weakness, you know, in the Middle East, it's kill or be killed. If you show weakness, the, the shark smells the blood in the water and they're going to come to kill us. So uh, we, did, we made this mistake with Hamas. Let's not make this mistake with Hezbollah. And uh, if they keep coming at us, we got to strike hard. Um, I'm not saying open war with the whole planet, but when somebody is testing us, uh, we need to show them, you know, we need to cut it at the butt. How long do you plan to stay in Israel? You mentioned you live in Vegas. Uh, if, if it were me, I'd probably take the first flight out if I could. Uh, but, are, you know, do you, do you intend to stay for the foreseeable future? Uh, honestly, I'm not sure if I can be of help. Uh, I want to stay here. Uh, when it started, you know, I was already supposed to be back. I was supposed to be for this week for our cousin's wedding and it got canceled. Um, but right now I'm staying. I want to see if they need the citizens to fight. I'm not a soldier. I'm, a, I'm an MMA fighter, as you know. But uh, if they need us to defend our country, if they need the citizens to, to, to actively do it, then I'm here to do it. And if I'm not needed, uh, we'll see. I, I can imagine it would be uh, pretty scary uh, if uh, you were a Hamas terrorist to see uh, n- not just an ordinary soldier, but also a, a fairly famous uh, UFC fighter coming at you. Th- there is a, you know, kind of an irony about that because, as you say, you're, you're not a soldier. You are a professional fighter. Um, what do you think the likelihood is that the citizenry and the civilians would be called up? Right now, I feel it's not likely with the days going by. You know, citizens had to fight. Don't get this wrong. Citizens fought for their, you know, for their homes. Uh, when the terrorist attack on Saturday, uh, October 7th, uh, it took the military hours to get together. Yeah, that's a big fail. No doubt about it. Uh, we got caught uh, not ready, but the citizens were fighting. And uh, thank God, you know, in America, you have the Second Amendment. And uh, in Israel, uh, we don't have the same amendment, but we can carry arms with a, with a license. And people who live around Gaza, many of them have a gun, and they fought off uh, thousands of terrorists. And uh, still we had many dead. But, uh, and you know, those terrorists, they're not, uh, I don't call them fighters, because if they would aim for soldiers, to kill soldiers, then you can say that's an act of war. People kill people in war. But they were going after civilians, they were going after teenagers that are raid, they were going after babies in their cribs. So uh, absolutely zero respect to this enemy. Uh, and I'm very happy that uh, some civilians had weapons and, uh, and shot them down. Absolutely. Uh, Natan, thank you so much for joining. Uh, stay safe out there. We will be praying for you. And uh, thanks for joining the show. 